hi, for this video, what I want to talk to you about is how do you find the odds against something happening? So in this case, the odds against is always the probability of failure divided by the probability of success. So it's how likely are you to fail is basically what you're looking at. Um, so the first situation I have here is we want to find the odds against rolling a five on a die. So when you're thinking about this, the first thing that you want to do is think about the options that you could have happen. So in this case, we could roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Okay, and so with this, what we want to look at is um, a probability of success in this case would be rolling a five. Everything else would be considered a failure. So to start with, what you want to do is find your probability of failure. And I'm just going to use P with F for failure. And I'm just going to use the P with the S for probability of success. So the probability of failure in this case, it would happen one, two, three, four, five times out of six. So this is our probability of failure. Our probability of success is how likely it is to happen. So because there's only one five, this only happens one out of six times. So when you're finding the odds against, what you are going to do is you're going to put um, the probability of failure, the five over six, over one out of six. And then we're just going to make this so that it's no longer an improper fraction or a complex fraction. So what we would do is multiply both the numerator and denominator by six. Essentially what we're doing is multiplying by one. So these would cancel out and we would end up with five over one. So you could write the answer to this in several ways. We could say the odds against is five to one as a fraction. The most common way of seeing the odds against is to see it as five colon one. So this is one way of writing the odds, or we could write it as five to one. So the odds against um, rolling a five is five to one. So you are um, out of basically six times, you expect to have five failures and one success. So that's the odds against rolling a five. All right, so let's look at another one. This time what we have, and I'm not going to draw out the whole picture for this one because it would take a long time. But for this one, what we have is we're finding the odds against selecting a face card. So if you know anything about a standard deck of 52 cards, it's important to understand that the 52 cards are broken up into four suits, um, the hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. And it has the cards, um, an ace represents a one, and then you have the numbers two through 10. And then you have a jack, a queen, and a king. A jack, a queen, and a king are considered face cards because they have faces on them. So there are a total of three face cards and there's four suits. So we have a total of 12 face cards in a deck of cards. Okay, so sometimes these questions show up and um, a lot of students don't understand the makeup of a deck of cards. So you can always look it up if you don't understand what it looks like. So in this case, what we have is the probability of failure would basically be the probability that it's not a face card. Okay, and in this case to find this, basically what we would do is 52 minus 12. So since there's 12 face cards, that tells us that there are 40 out of 52 are not face cards. Okay, we would also need to find the probability of success, which in this case would be the probability that we did select a face card, which is 12 out of 52. So when we're calculating the odds, and in this case, because we're doing the odds against, you have to do read the question carefully because sometimes it will say odds for, I will address, address that in another video. Um, in this case, what we're looking for is the odds against. So we would do 40 out of 52 
over 12 out of 52. And what ends up happening is these denominators are just gonna cancel each other out. So we really end up with 40 over 12. And most of the time, instead of saying 40 over 12, we would reduce it. Um, so in this case, because I can divide 40 by four and I can divide 12 by four, um, if I take 40 divided by four, I get 10. 12 divided by four is three. So we can say the odds against selecting a face card is 10 to three. So you can have it as 10 colon three, or you can actually write 10 to three. Um, you can also leave it as a fraction. There's many different ways of being able to write the odds. All right, let's look at one last situation. So for this one, what we're doing is we're looking at finding the odds against spinning an even number on the following spinner. And so all of our pieces in this one are equal. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have the numbers one through six. And we're looking for the probability of spending an even number. So the first thing that we want to do is remember that it's the probability of a failure divided by the probability of success. So we would look at these two things. In this case, a failure would be an odd number. So what is the probability of rolling an odd or spinning an odd number? So my odd numbers would be one, three, and five. So that happens three out of six times. The probability of even, that's a two, four, or six. So it also happens three out of six times. So when I set this up, the odds against, we would do our probability of failure divided by our probability of success. So we would put three over six divided by three over six. And no matter how complicated anything is, if you reduce the same thing or you have the same thing over the same thing, this ends up being a one over one. And because we're talking about odds, we don't wanna just write it as one. We do wanna write it as the odds against spinning an even number is one to one. So it is possible for every one win, that means that there's going to be, um, so for every one failure, there's also gonna be one success. So it is possible to have one to one odds. So just to recap, anytime it says odds against, you are going to use this formula, the probability of failure divided by the probability of success. Um, it's easiest not to reduce the probabilities beforehand to keep the denominator the same. If you do reduce and they don't both reduce, then it makes it a little more complicated to simplify. Um, there are a couple different ways of writing your answer. So five colon one or five to one is another way of writing it. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.